Hello out there, my name is James and welcome to Super Easy History, the channel where today we'll dive into five fun facts about the army with a state, Prussia. But first, if you enjoy our five fun facts series or just history in general, don't forget to go down below and hit the subscribe button and the bell to make sure that you get notified about our next video. Now on to the facts. Number one, Brandenburg, Prussia. So the early days of the German state of Prussia are complicated. At first, it was just a duchy and a part of Poland, but later it united with the electorate of Brandenburg in the Holy Roman Empire. Brandenburg and Prussia were ruled by the Hohenzollern family for most of the 16th century, and it wasn't until 1618 that the two countries were actually unified by Johann Sigismund von Hohenzollern. Under Johann Sigismund's son and then grandson, Frederick William, the Great Elector, Brandenburg Prussia expanded its borders and fought in the Thirty Years' War, during which it switched sides no less than three times. Then in 1657, after two wars with Sweden and Poland, Prussia, though not Brandenburg, became independent. In 1701, the great elector's son, Frederick von Hohenzollern, elevated himself from Zhukov to king in Prussia. Number two, Frederick the Great. A different Frederick, the grandson of the first, he was an enlightened despot who sought to expand the kingdom of Prussia and make it into a great power. To do that, he looked south towards the valuable Austrian territory of Silesia. At the time, Austria was having a bit of trouble deciding who would be its next leader, and subsequently the Holy Roman Emperor, so Frederick faced little, successful, opposition to his occupation of the territory. Unfortunately, only a few years after getting his hands on Silesia, a small, insignificant conflict known as the Seven Years' War broke out and Prussia suddenly found itself at war with the great powers of France, Austria, and Russia. So, um, that wasn't good. But in what would become known as the miracle of the House of Brandenburg, Russia left the war in 1762, and peace between Prussia and the other powers was made a year later. Frederick kept Silesia, and the victory cemented Prussia's place among the great powers. Later in Frederick's reign, he actually worked with the Austrians and Russians, welcome to 18th century European politics, to divide up large parts of Poland, which, admittedly, was also quite a common pastime. Number three, the army with a state. Prussia was a rather small country, especially compared with other European great powers, and yet it went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them on more than one occasion and came out victorious. Why? Well, for one, at the start of Frederick the Great's reign, roughly one in eight Prussian men was a soldier, and by the time of the Seven Years' War, the Prussian army stood at roughly 100,000 strong. The Prussians also spent a staggering four-fifths of their state budget on their well-organized, well-trained, and disciplined army. In 1653, the Great Elector created a standing army, which didn't rely on the nobility for support. For the Prussians, especially the upper class, militarism was a way of life, and it was to remain that way well into the 20th century. Number 4. German Unification In spite of their military prowess, the Prussians were defeated by Napoleon in the first few years of the 1800s. Around the same time, the Holy Roman Empire was dissolved. Then Napoleon was defeated, and Prussia became completely independent. So they went and did what every self-respecting great power did back then, and built themselves an empire. The mastermind of the empire was Prussia's minister-president, Otto von Bismarck. He led Prussia into another war against their rival, Austria, in 1866, crushed them in just six weeks, and forced Austria to relinquish its influence in Germany. Next, Bismarck's Prussia formed a confederation with several smaller states in northern Germany, but he couldn't get the southern states, namely Bavaria, Baden, and Württemberg, to join him and fully unite the country. So in 1870, Bismarck provoked war with France, convinced the South German states it was a worthy cause, and used an impending French defeat to declare a united German empire. Number 5. The Leader of Germany Prussia was no longer independent, but it was the largest and most powerful state within one of the strongest nations in Europe. For the entirety of the German Empire's existence, the King of Prussia was always the Kaiser or Emperor of Germany, and Prussian ideals of militarism came to define much of German society. This came to a head in 1914 when the German Empire, under Kaiser Wilhelm II, entered World War I as an ally of their old Austrian enemies. The Germans lost the war, and the German Empire became a republic, but Prussia still existed, although with a bit less land and just not as a kingdom. Instead, it was called the Free State of Prussia, even though it was still a part of Germany. But when the country fell to dictatorship in the early 1930s, most of Prussia's state powers were handed over to the central government. 
After Germany's defeat in World War II a decade later, Prussia was officially dissolved and Germany was split in two. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right in the middle of your screen. You can also check out one of our other videos by clicking on one of the links to the left, and as always, thank you for watching Super Easy History.